Welcome back. You're still watching NBS Live at 9 and on NBS Focal Point. Professor Peter Weiswa calls for investment in maternal and newborn health to curb the increasing cases of maternal and neonatal deaths. He spoke to Samson Kasumba on NBS Focal Point, revealing that Uganda has 1.7 million pregnancies every year, out of which 6,000 women die due to birth complications. A very good evening. My name is Samson Kasumba and this is the focal point. Today, unlike many others, my heart is broken because I begin with a figure that is scandalous and scary that we are going to have a conversation this evening about the death of between 120,000 and 130,000 Ugandan children die every year. How that is broken down, what kills them, is what you're going to know. My guest is uh, Professor Peter Weiswa, uh, from, uh, who has an MBCHB, you know what those are, uh, MPH and PhD. He's an associate professor, uh, Professor Tsangaide. Kodeo. <laughs> professor, just break down to us where these numbers are coming from. This country has almost 1.7 million pregnancies and births a year. Okay. But among those, we lose about 6,000 women okay. every year. Every what kills year. them? So most of these women die of things we can't prevent. The commonest cause of death is because they bleed to death. Hemorrhage. And hemorrhage. We call it postpartum hemorrhage. Yeah. Uh, the other causes are what we call sepsis or getting infection okay. after, many after birth. Okay. And then uh, some of them are hypertension and diabetes. Those are the commonest causes of death. So those kill 6,000? Si kill 6,000 and you can add abortion to that number. Yeah. But then when a woman is pregnant, yeah. she's pregnant because she wants a baby. Yes. So these babies, we lose babies in the first month of life. Mm. There are two types of babies here. There's what we call stillbirth. Okay. Stillbirth are babies who die in a mother's womb okay. before they are born. Okay. And in the babies anyway. In Uganda, we have about 40,000 babies who die in the womb of their moms before they are born. So the baby might, might be born and it cries, but dies before it makes one month of life. Okay. We call those neonatal deaths yes, or neonatal. newborn deaths. Yeah. And those are estimated to be about 39,000. <sighs> so when you put them together with the women, mm. just around the time of birth, if you, the time of birth, we lose 6,000 plus 40,000 stillbirths mm -hmm. plus 39, that's a total of 85,000 people who are lost just in this short so between period when of, you get pregnant, of labor. Yeah. Between you get pregnant and I think a month. A month. 89,000 are 85, gone. 85,000 yeah. are gone. And uh, if you calculate it backwards, this is about 230 days per day. 230 deaths per day. per day. Are there nations doing better than us? Unfortunately, most of Africa is not doing well in terms of maternal and newborn health. Although, by the way, in terms of older kids, yeah. Uganda is one of the countries which is doing well. Okay. So we can discuss that. Older kids, um, from what from age one, do we start to do well? From one month yeah. up to five years. From one to five, we start to do well. We, we start to do well. But this time of, of birth, we are doing very badly. So countries like uh, Rwanda, uh, Rwanda is one. Wa Rwanda is one of the few countries. Rwanda, Malawi, uh, of recent Ethiopia, there are some of the and Eritrea. There are countries which are doing well, and of course the Arab world. Yeah. Those ones are doing well in terms of maternal health. What can we do to start to do well? At least to bring these figures away from double digit to single digit, because I think something can be done. The good news, we have the policy context. Our policies are 100% right. But children are still dying with good policies. Yes. Yeah. So now the, the challenge is implementation. Do we have the wrong personnel? Do we, is it that because we don't have money? What do we need that we don't have? We must invest. We have not invested enough in the maternal and newborn health. We've invested in child health in terms of vaccines, in terms of um, malaria control, 
and stuff like that. But care for women during pregnancy and during birth is an area we must do more. So people are coming to deliver in Esper cities. Uganda is doing well. But the quality they receive is not good enough. But Doc, what I do know is that the chairperson of the whole Health Committee of Parliament is a doctor. You have one of you in Parliament. Why isn't this still working? Well, maybe it is not just about one person. <laughs> this is a systems issue. It's about the whole governance and society. Both the private sector, the government sector, and the communities. We must all come together to ensure that, one, we invest, two, we are accountable, three, we have the commodities. Many times, of course, we say, uh, what is the role of society, what is the role of government, what is the role of the providers? In this country, the majority of women come to hospital when they are uh, dilated. I mean, they have been in labor for about five hours, five, six hours. Sometimes it's just too late to do something. Okay. And what are the reasons why women still prefer traditional birth attendants uh, to proper health care? The situation in Uganda has been changing. Women are preferring hospital, but, that, but there is still a significant number, about, I think, 20%, who still deliver with with traditional birth attendants. But even a lot of these women who come to hospitals, they have mixed care. They, they might start with a traditional birth attendant, they may do traditional medicine at home before they come to hospital. I think we have a culture issue. People believe in their, uh, their hubs. Yes. But also... Mumbwa. Mumbwa. Yes. But also, if uh, actually delivery care was a business, Uganda would be doing so well. Because one of the challenges, however much the government tries, we just have too many pregnancies in this country, and half of these pregnancies are unwanted. They are unwanted, they are unplanned, but then they, and then they come late. They don't, some of them, they don't do good antenatal care. And then they expect that the health workers will be there waiting to provide the best care. We don't have national health insurance in this country. So basically, the health, care, the health workers are there waiting for women to come. <laughs> And they come with all kinds of complications. They don't know which woman is coming. They are just at the door steps and they say, oh, this one has come convulsing. This one is coming bleeding. But when you are alone, you don't have the commodities. Maybe you're in a health center too, or a health center during the night. You don't have help. Or you have an overwhelmed public hospital, Mlago, for instance, or Chirudo or Kawempe. Are you saying we have babies more than our ability to deal with them and that's becoming a problem. A, B, is it about time we started to give the message, don't have babies, we have more than enough? Definitely, if women have the babies they don't need, it's a problem because they are not going to give these babies the care they, the babies need. So what we are ending up in this country is women who are malnourished, who are anemic, who are poor, who give birth to babies who are small size, low birth weight, and then when some of these survive, they are stunted. And the stunted baby, it means also the brain is stunted. So even if they grow up, they will never be productive. They will never be productive. This is not a kind of a population you, that is going to build the country. So having babies that you don't need at individual level, at community level, or at a country level is not good. But we've had some private um, entrepreneurs who have come into the business and built huge um, uh, healthcare facilities. Um, haven't they done enough, the private so, developers? Now, as much as the public sector is struggling, the private sector is also struggling. Mainly because I think our economy is not yet strong. People don't have the consumption power of healthcare to be able to finance the private sector. Does that then suggest that the taxpayer for the good of this country's health care systems should be subsidizing private health care? Because it's a chain. This is what I seem to be hearing. I think it is important that uh, government creates an environment that is good for the private sector to thrive. Does it seem that government is doing something or does it seem that this is a sector, A, that has been neglected, and B, that we don't seem to understand how important it is, hence, 
the insufficient funding. It has been an improvement because in areas like HIV, mother-to-child transmission, they have scored. Yeah. In malaria, they, there's been a significant improvement. There is more to be done. Uh, where I come from in Busoga, <laughs> we have a lot of malaria now. So I'm actually calling upon the government that one of the priority areas to do is actually Busoga in Kampan now. You could actually sleep without a mosquito net in most places because there has been improvements. I haven't so, had malaria for the last 15 years. So, yeah, that's credit. Um, immunization, although there are struggles, the government has quite done well and has even introduced new vaccines. So we no longer talk of six killer diseases. We now have almost 12 vaccines from six a, couple, a decade ago. In fact, in the last five, like uh, in about the last 10 years. So there are areas in water and sanitation, there has been huge improvement. The area has gone down. But now come to pneumonia, come to health care for babies who are still in the womb and those who are just born, we still have a problem. And then also these issues like malnutrition. You know, almost a third of kids in this country are stunted. This is, should be a public health emergence and the, the same attention one we, third of the children in uganda are malnourished zero five years are malnourished. Are malnourished yeah that should be breaking news yeah it's yeah i don't know why it doesn't break news but uh, that's an emergency this malnutrition is the foundation for all the children who die after one month of life so when you are malnourished then the chances that pneumonia will knock you that you get tb that you get diarrhea and the other diseases become high. So now, who should be fighting malnutrition? Is it the Minister of Health? Of course not. Who should be? Of course. The this parents? Is, this is society. Yes. Families having food and knowing how to feed the kids. Is malnutrition a new thing? Because it doesn't seem that 50, 60 years ago, these were problems. Well, malnutrition has always been a problem. In fact, even the one in three is an improvement. Many years ago, decades ago, it used to be one in four. So it has been an improvement, but it's been very slow. But when you were growing up in Busoga, uh, it was difficult to find children well, that are well, malnourished. Well, because many children who are malnourished are not visible. We are not talking about the severe malnutrition where you say kid okay. and the, 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 the hair is brown, the baby is, is, uh, is swollen, not like that. But the baby is just short for their age. Okay. Uh, that is what we call stunting, short for their age. Does that suggest that poverty is also part of the problem? Of course. Poverty, poor education, or lack of it are major determinants of health care. In fact, one of the things I wanted to talk about, that if we are transforming the health sector, these are the things that need to be done. One, yeah. we must invest. A investment. Investment. Mm. Two, we must implement. We cannot just end on having good policies. We must implement cover everybody, make sure that nobody is left behind, and that healthcare, whatever we do, has quality. Oh. High coverage with quality. And three? three? We must strengthen our primary healthcare system. Primary healthcare refers to that care you receive at the first point of contact. Yes. That is the care you get in your home, in your community, in some of these lower uh, health centers and maybe even in a district hospital. So we must continue strengthening that. And I'm glad that the Minister of Health takes it as it's one of his priorities. But, and this is where I differ from the Ministry, because it is not enough. Now most of the children and mothers who are dying, they die in hospitals. The quality of care in our hospitals is still poor. And hospitals have, have been forgotten. And the final one is accountability so we must be accountable for every death every death counts that includes every matter death we should be able to explain why it occurred and what are we going to put in place to avoid the next one right now we just report um, doc prof wekaza <laughs> i have done my job of bringing the professor here he's given the figures now let the hard work begin certainly that hard work begins with ending this show and asking my cameraman to switch it off
And that brings us to the end of NBS Live at Nine tonight. I'm Rukshana Namwimbaits. Good night from me. I was joined by Ms. Hope Gwang for Sign Language Interpretation. Good night.